When I'm angry, I go play soccer. When I'm sad, I go play soccer. Whenever I can, I go play soccer. It's just soccer like 24-7 to be honest. What I learned like through my childhood and what I've seen in my family is like love. When you see something, you're gonna grab onto it and you're gonna give it out. You know, I'm a person that if you come to me, like I'll give you all the love in the world. I've always been going to MGH. It's just my second home. I've been sick multiple, multiple times, more than I can count. I met Josh's mom before I met Josh because she had had a prenatal ultrasound that had shown abnormalities in the central nervous system and in the spine. They told me um, he had spina bifida. What I know, it's just big words. <laughs> spina bifida is just a deformation of the spine, I guess. Parts of his spinal cord were exposed to the world and not protected by skin and by bone. They also told me I have to get a C-section because he wouldn't be able to move his, his legs. I was afraid. I, I was like super afraid. But Dr. Bartlett speaks Spanish and he, he was able to explain everything to me. If you can close the uh, open spine defect within 24 hours of birth, those infants no longer die of meningitis. My first surgery, it was like a couple hours after I was born. Infants with spina bifida can have associated abnormalities in the brain. So your brain makes and re replaces spinal fluid about four times per day. And if there is an imbalance of production of the spinal fluid and absorption of the spinal fluid, then the fluid builds up. And you don't want to have a lot of fluid in your brain. It's not good for you. And the condition is hydrocephalus. One of the common interventions for this is the VP shunt, and it's a tube that dumps the excess fluid into the abdominal cavity where it can then be absorbed. One day when Mrs. Canales brought him in for routine follow-up, and she said, look at this. And he started standing up. Dr. Barley was so excited. And I thought, home run. It was a human threshold that had been made concrete in his life. I always tell him that he's my, my gift from God, my miracle. Back in February, I remember I was in school and like I felt pretty crummy and I hope to God it's a one time thing because that pain I felt like, like the headache that I had wasn't normal. Then I went to the hospital and then after a couple analysis, they told me that my VP shunt like was infected and I had meningitis so they had to take it out. If untreated, can lead to serious irreversible brain damage. It can even cause death. A couple of days after, they told me you can either put the shunt back in or we can do a surgery which would basically, you know, make you not need that shunt anymore. And I was just like, for sure, when you hear that, like, oh, no more shunt. This operation is called an endoscopic third ventriculosomy. One identifies within the brain the area of blockage and opens a membrane to unblock the flow of spinal fluid. And when that works, that person no longer needs a shunt implant. It was first done in this hospital in 1922. That procedure was tabled uh, for decades until the late 90s. It's just a privilege to be at this institution where we continue to lead uh, innovations in that area. In 30 or 40 percent of people, it doesn't work. So it seemed worth the gamble. Having Dr. Butler basically 16 years, the one word that I could describe this, that relationship that I have with him is trust. One of Josh's favorite things to do in the hospital was work with music therapy, and he always had a guitar in his room, and when he was feeling up to it, he would play. Music therapy, it was just great, because like in those moments, like I would forget like all the pain in the world, like I would just be happy. The surgery was just a success. After the shunt was out, like it was completely like carefree, like I had like, like a thousand pounds off my shoulders. And it was a joy to write a letter saying, yes, he can play soccer. He can play, you know, the way he, he loved to play now without, you know, any restrictions. He believed more in himself. He's more confident now. He works as hard as the rest of the kids to have pretty intensive brain surgery and to be back playing in a series of weeks is truly astounding. So I would like love to see Dr. Butler be able to do more of these to allow more kids to live their lives out of the hospital. 
So we have at National Hospital of Children the ability to form lifelong bonds with our patients. He's the one who's been there for my son since the first moment, you know, when he was born. So you go into medicine because you want to find a way to be who you are fully. You want to be with people, you want to help them, and you want to come through with what people depend on you for. So everything you dreamed about since you were small and you worked at, people like Josh make it become real for you.